go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, it's Carter Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Nice. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm your friggin' host, Strider Wilson, dude. We got Aaron on the sticks being a straight-up beast. What's going down, Aaron? What up? Dude, I'm just getting into that holiday season. It's holiday e. You know what I'm saying, dude? Also, the dank fiance is out of town, so the drill factory is fully operational. Punching in for overtime <laughs> in the drill factory. <laughs> also, I'm wearing my Canadian tux right now. You know, it's a worker, you know, it's very, I got my blue collar on. It's a denim shirt. I got my, my hip black denim jeans, and we're going to be talking denim today baby so we're leading us right into that topic but first before we do that aaron let's just have a little fun dude you know cut it up flush it out sure. i mean what's your favorite thing to do around the holidays you know are we talking the the christmas holidays yeah yeah christmas thanks i think you know yeah put them together christmas thanksgiving that season you know yeah sweater uh, weather season here in socal we, yeah, where people like, put on a third item and it's still 85 degrees and you just know they're sweating their dongs off yeah there is that um pool of sweat i like uh i like a hot chocolate at night that's mm. for sure most nights dude that's so nice that's yeah. so cozy dude do you put marshmallows in there not usually no do you stir it with a candy cane no do you s no i don't want that flavor do you in there. sip it and then smooch your dank wife sure dude i love that yeah isn't there is there anything better than just being cozy dude I think I might just like, well, my favorite thing is pinning my dad because I do get to see him over the holidays and I will pin his old ass now <laughs> and I'll let him know who's boss now. And that feels good. That's huge. You know what I mean? I wait for him to fill up on his meal, fill up on turkey. I don't touch. I don't eat anything. I eat nothing. I have a couple bites of protein. Um, I really, I pipe, I, you know, carved up the night before spaghetti. I, I basically treat it like game day leading up to it, you know, carb up day before good energy hydrate and then wait for my dad to finish his meal and as soon as he stands up um to take his plate to the sink uh he's on the ground tapping out dude I say say uncle dude tell my dad to call me uncle dude <laughs> and that's a great thing that's what's great about the holidays bringing people together you know and that's a, that's kind of how we bond dude and then after that He's like, my back hurts, and I'm like, dude, don't worry, I'll get you some ice, bro, post up, watch the game, Thanksgiving, you know, I pin them on Thanksgiving, and I pin them on Christmas. Um, so it's just important to do that, dude. Has, what's the uh, what's the best gift you've ever gotten, or worst gift? Ooh, uh... Or received. I'll tell you this, while you think about it. I give the worst gifts, my brother finally called me out, dude. Dude, I was leaving the stickers on at the bar. I'd go to Barnes and Nobles and I'd get bargain books. Dude, I got my brother a book on how to tie knots one time. He's like, cool, dude. Thanks. Yeah. Like, I, I can definitely tell you the worst gifts I've ever given. What's uh, that? I gave my sister a DVD. I mean, it's not bad, but she just <laughs> did not want it. Uh, DVD of uh, Mel Gibson's The Patriot. Bro, that's a great gift. It's a good movie. A fantastic gift, dude. Benjamin Martin, bro, let's go. I just, I never knew what to give my sister. Uh, I still don't. Well, get them here. I think you can't go wrong if you get them something you like. I mean, you kind of can. You're like, I like this. <sighs> One year I gave her you know, the like, DVDs. I like calendars with women holding high caliber rifles. Yeah. In well, lingerie. I mean, on that front, I gave her one year, I gave her a DVD of Scarface. That's uh, awesome. Dude, with you should some treat meaning me like to your it. sister, dude. With some meaning to it, because she's a terrible, when she curses, it's terrible. Mm. And I was like, well, you got to learn from Tony Montana. That yeah, oh yeah, people who are bad at cursing. Yeah, I talked about my my landlord or uh, excuse me, not landlord, uh, property manager Pam. She's a legend, dude, and she adds the word "ass" every time she swears. She, Damn ass! People need to take their shit ass mail out. <laughs> and someone left the fuck ass door open. And people are coming in taking damn ass boxes. <laughs> dude, it's hilarious. I like shit ass as a thing. That's shit ass is so funny. One of the favorite things of uh, out of Reservation Dogs on Hulu. Oh really? Yeah. It's great. Adding ass 
And you know, it's kind of charming. Like I'm not mad. I'm, I'm, I love when, when she speaks like that, to be honest. It's great. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So that's, I mean, you give good at, those are good ass gifts. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I gave her a so, DVD uh, of Dr. Dillil two as well. And I was just like, what's kind of fuck? a bad one. I just don't know what to get you. Like gift have, cards, dude, have more hobbies. I don't know. Cash, bro. Yeah. Well, you know what, dude, before we get into today's topic, maybe honestly, our freaking dank sponsors can help you out, dude, because I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Dadgrass, dude. Tis the season to indulge. But if you don't want to get so high, you go to the moon, let Dadgrass help you chill out and enjoy the ride. Their classic pre-roll joints, hemp flour, tinctures, and gummies are the perfect replacement for, you know, or pair to that glass of mulled wine or third helping of pie. It's just the best, dude. I mean, you know what I'm saying, dude? And I love what I love about Dadgrass. It's that glass of wine, not that whole bottle. It's just that right amount of buzz feeling, dude. And, you know, right now, Dagrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dagrass.com slash dank. Go to dagrass.com slash dank for 20% off your first order. That's dagrass.com slash dank. And I also got to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Manscaped. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts, whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants. You can make the season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Dude, I gotta say, it's so true, dude. Grooming up down there, especially around the holiday season, making things a little extra special for your significant other, it's the right way to go about it, dude. So, <laughs> And it's also a great gift. Spread that gift, you know what I'm saying? Do treat yourself and treat others. So get 20% off. And free shipping with code DANK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code DANK, MANSCAPED. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. I love it. Those are great, great gift ideas. I think you and I could both learn something from that. All right, dude. We're talking denim. And I'm not just, you know, look, I'm not all hat and no horse today. I'm not just wearing my denim shirt and not knowing about you know, the history behind this article of clothing. One of my favorite scenes in Devil Wears Prada, you know, when Meryl Streep's talking about that turquoise belt and Anne Hathaway kind of snickers <laughs> as if it's like ridiculous or over the top. And then, you know, the fashionista queen herself gives a rather pointed undressing, if you will, to Anne Hathaway's character about her outfit and the history of everything she's wearing, just a regular old sweater. Oh, she, she goes, do you know how, how that sweater came to be? Let me tell you, it all starts with fashion. And I would say, I don't know many more items, clothing items more iconic than the blue jean. I mean, Aaron, can you think of one? I mean, no. fucking shoes, dude? No. But there's all sorts of types of shoes. I mean, Air Jordans yeah. are sick, but you know, the blue jean is one of the dankest items and it wasn't it was invented for a purpose and for workmen and the blue jean goes all the way back i mean it has its roots in you know dungarees aka overalls and you know maybe these streets of london and these cities and you know san francisco is where the blue jean comes from in the gold rush in 1849 you know your 49ers and we'll get into the, exactly how it came about but you know uh, necessity is the mother of invention and you have these overalls and they're readily a cloth material and they'll get dirty and fade and, and, and then you got miners you got you all know, you have night soil men and people working the stewers and all this stuff going around these cities and working the muck in the mile and then you've got gold miners going out there staking a claim working on their knees get, getting down in the river getting their clothes wet coming straight out of that getting down getting down and and, and getting rocks and and you know it's got to be Rugged, and they're going through pants, and it's honestly, it's not economical how many pants they're freaking going through. Maybe they just ditch their pants. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, that's kind of demented. You got your dong, you're, you're dropping hog, and I mean, it's nice. You'll get some freaking sun on your perineum and st stoke up the vitamin D, but, you know, there's ladies out there, dude. They don't want to see your... No one should ever be subject to the reverse angle of a dude's butthole in the back of the balls. You know what I'm talking about, Aaron? Oh, yeah. When the guy's like, imagine you have a gold, uh, an, uh, a gold miner panning for gold, He's bent over, and you see the back of his balls. That's gonna ruin your lunch, dude. It's gonna ruin your. It's gonna ruin your month. Might even you know be scorched onto your retina for eternity. 
that seeing your seeing an old dude's boss like like when you go to the gym at 24 hour fitness dude just go in there and just follow the friggin ceiling lights to the bathroom like the vertical vertical horizontal turn vertical horizontal turn because you know how many old dudes balls i've seen in there too many dude too many i don't know what it is with age you know maybe it just comes to an age where you just go i'm gonna let my sagging nuts drop and flop people need to see this they need to know I mean, they were never beautiful, you know, a dong and balls is never the most beautiful thing to look at in the first place, unless, you know, you got manscaped, what up, dude, we'll be talking more about that, helps things around there, but, you know, it's not exactly a, you know, Da Vinci. In any case, genes are invented, and it's the brainchild of this businessman, Levi Strauss, and Taylor Jacob Davis, this guy, Jacob Davis. He is the one who decides to put metal rivets to denim trousers to create a durable uniform that stood up to the rough and tumble work of the 49ers. That's necessity is the mother of invention. There is your necessity. And this guy, Jacob Davis, he's like, dude, look, bro, these things are popping off. Everyone loves these jeans. He writes a a letter in like old timey talk. You know, he's like kind of half literate. He's like the Socrat meaning secret, of them pants, pants, is the rivets, rivets, that I put in those pockets, pockets. He said, I cannot make them up fast enough. My neighbors are getting yellows of these success. <laughs> That's what he wrote, dude. And I see why Levi Strauss took all the credit. <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. He's like, this guy's a fucking dumbass. I'm going to put my name on this and he won't know. He's like, no, dude, that's how you spell Jacobs. Kind of sounds like Strauss, but it's Jacobs. Trust me, dude. <laughs> uh, and so he go, they go into business together and boom, bro. It's off to the races. Um, he, he wants the patent. He can't afford the patent for these pants. And, and Strauss, that's where he comes in. Um, and they have what makes these jeans so amazing and this is a great quote that i got and they go why did it sell and it's because the denim it's a durable fabric and it changes as it's aged and the way it wore reflected the people's lives and so jeans are developed as a basically a uniform for 49ers but then by wearing it and how you wear it it becomes a reflection of who the individual wearing them and that is the iconic. That is what makes them iconic. It's what makes them American. It's what spreads them around the globe and makes them so popular is jeans and fashion as self-expression. Now, self-expression and fashion have been around before this and goes back to maybe not even self, even class expression, the ancient Egyptians, the jewelry that you wore, the trinkets, the or, the uh, adornments worn by the pharaohs and then the Romans, you know, the senators had the, had the purple dye on there. That was a sign of wealth and affluence. Now, jeans truly bring the America and then in class together. Not yet, not in 1949. I'm sort of getting ahead, but we'll get there and, and see how that develops. But just remember that the fact that a jean in denim changes as it ages and it's durable and becomes almost better looking uh, is what makes this pant. pant. It's sort of like the unknown and the, uh, the accidental gift of using denim because they just wanted something that was durable would hold up putting the rivets in the pockets you know if you find a fat nugget of gold dude you don't want that to slip out of your cotton pockets or a fat nugget dude you don't want that slipping out of your pants dude so they uh use an indigo dye i mean that's kind of genius um it helped the softening with the age they, they kind of wanted to blend because they knew it was working and indigo was the color also fun fact indigo um gets its name that color from the indus valley region that's where that color came from indigo Sort of, you know, it's purplish type color or a light blue, right? Jean. Um, so sick, dude. Uh, fun fact, bro. The patent was number patent 139, 121. So 139,121 from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. They received that patent, Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis on May 20th, 1873. Um, so jeans sort of become... It's, it, they're made for work, right? Sort of a working class thing at this point, 1840s. Um, 
miners are wearing them, cowboys soon adapt them, mine workers, laborers. Basically, if you're using your hands, getting down on your knees, uh, you are wearing some blue jeans. Um, they're, they're just functional, dude. They're very freaking functional. Um, it was the fashion of the, of the American West. That was what it was, dude, all the way in, in, but mainly used by, for function, not exactly fashion at this point. Um, so, and this is basically all the way up until the twenties and thirties. Uh, then you have, you know, world war two, you get dudes coming back from world war two, these GIs. A lot of guys, you get boomers, you know, get married, settle down. But there's also a lot of dudes who are like, you know what, man? I just escaped death. Uh, I'm going to fucking cruise, dude. I'm going to get on a motorcycle and I'm going to cruise, dude. And you know what's probably the sickest just practical pant for cruising around town? It's durable. I can sit on my hog and it keeps my hog pretty freaking chill. Probably some jeans. And out of that, you get this 1950s popularization of the blue jean you get movies you get bad boys like marlon brando playing cowboys going oh what do cowboys wear oh they wore blue jeans you got marlon brando marlon brando's cool okay you got james dean basically being one of these gis i was just talking about in the movie rebel without a cause right so you have this 60s really it's the 1960s but the obsession with the 1950s like quote greaser look denim jeans rolled up the cuff you know pack of cigs in the sleeve that johnny bravo greaser style look johnny bravo the cartoon not the movie with johnny depp which is a sick ass movie um but is this casual fashion this is where it became fashionable you also have and remember i talked about the merging of the classes you have wealthy um and you got these gis traveling the country right seeing everything on their bikes, cruising around on, on their hogs with their bros. And then you have North, you know, Northeastern and maybe even Northwestern, but mainly Northeastern, maybe aristocratic um, vets going, you know what, let's go on vacation. Where are we gonna go? Let's go, let's go out west. Let's cruise to California. Oh, people are wearing jeans. It was very popularized to go um, to dude ranches at that time, you know? You go see Marlon Brando, hey, let's go cruise to a friggin' dude ranch and experience what that's like. Guess what they're wearing? They're wearing jeans. If you're getting on a horse, you know, you want to look the part, you want to feel the part. New Yorkers start wearing blue jeans because of this. They go on vacation. They bring them back. They kind of look good. They can get dressed up or down. That's not happening yet, but it's spreading. So through the medium of film and television, through individuals just wanting to go out and be their own James Dean badass dudes, you know, Sucking back gorts, aka chill sticks, aka cigs, being rebels without a cause. They become so popular, young kids are starting to wear them, right? They start to idolize these cool dudes. Jane Zine's hot. Hot dude. Marlon Brando, hot, was a hot dude. Before he was the godfather, before he was, you know, before he was talking like that. He actually kind of always did like this type of thing. But he was a hot dude. He was buff. Am I right, Aaron? Oh, yeah. Good yeah. arms. Check out um, Streetcar Named Desire. Woo. Yeah. Dude was a looker. You got young kids looking up to that, seeing them in the movies, the Hollywood movies. They're getting the girl. They're riding around. They're being cool. Young kids go, I'm wearing jeans. They start to wear them to school. Schools go, nope. Uh-uh. That, those jeans, that represents rogue behavior. Too much individualist thinking. We don't want that based on what you wore. You know, they say don't judge a book by its cover. To a degree, when someone wears an outfit, I'm going to judge. You can judge or you can deter. It doesn't mean, this, you know, judge might come with uh, looking down one's nose upon, you know. Uh, but you can induce things. You can understand things about someone where they're from and base at that time before, you know, say before the 1950s, you see someone wearing jeans, you go, oh, you're probably from out West. Where are you from Colorado, dude? When I went to summer camp and I saw a dude wearing swim trunks and a Speedo, I go, this dude doesn't surf, bro. Then you try to go, hey, can I borrow some board shorts? Those things are sick. And everyone in our cabin goes, no, you don't surf. Sorry, bro. Can't have board shorts. 
But now board shorts are everywhere. They're ubiquitous, dude. Jeans were becoming ubiquitous. Jeans were becoming popularized because what makes something popular? If your parent, if you tell as a parent or any authority, don't do this, what are you immediately going to want to do? It's human nature. I want to try that. Especially when, since you already bought the jeans, dude. You got your Levi's 501s, dude. They start putting that classic red patch on the back. If you dip, dude, the sickest kids in, in school, dude, were the kids that had the dip tin indent in their jeans, you know? In, even though you weren't allowed to bring dip to school, but the indent was there, so let everyone know that. You better believe I'm dipping when I'm not here, dude. Once I dip out of, school, of class early, I'm going to dip, dude. So sick. So chill. But they become, be, jeans become a sign of rebelliousness, a sign of individualism, dude. Ironically, though, because everyone's doing it, it's like I kind of used to like, you know, kind of used to freaking clown on dudes that were goth. I'd be like, oh, you wear like kilts and, you know, eyeliner to be rebellious, but you all kind of look the same when you're doing it. But I, then I thought about it again, and I'm like, but that's tight. You have a community and a subculture. Jeans didn't even have time to spend time in a subculture. They immediately just went into the popular culture through Hollywood, television, badass looking dudes. But don't count the ladies out, dude. Jeans were created for men, right? Claim jump, or, uh, minors, yeah, and claim jumpers, I should say. But uh, feminists use them a way, as a way to respel, rebel against the status quo by wearing jeans as well. So let me tell you, thank God they did. <laughs> Convertible Craig likes the way the ladies look in those jeans. Especially the tight-waisted ones. Low rise. We'll get into styles in a little bit. Don't you worry about that. But baby, I like to cruise around in a convert. I like to have the top down in my car and stare at ladies' butts. I like to cruise around and just say, hey, nice butt, baby, and then keep going. Literally, you know what we used to do when we were younger? Me and my buddy Robert used to drive around. And uh, we'd tell my little brother to... And this is inappropriate. This is inappropriate to say that, but we would teach him a lesson, but it was a lesson not rooted in benevolence, even though the message at the end of it was a good thing, but we really just liked, liked to see my brother suffer because he was younger. He wanted to be cool, hanging with the boys, cruising back from the beach, and we'd be going from the beach, and everyone's going down. This is SoCal. We'd be at Salt Creek, and everyone kind of has to go through this little tunnel, and if you drive by the tunnel, it, you can sort of see people and walk by, and you'd kind of like you'd like blast your music. You try to look a little extra cool when you drove by there. It was like sick. You kind of knew everyone would see you there. And me and my buddy Robert were cruising and my little brother was in the back and we're like, dude, Matt, dude, uh, yell nice butt baby to those girls in the bikini. Yell nice butt baby. He's like, no. And, and me and my brother are like, me and my buddy Robert were like, dude, it's sick. It's chill if you do. Trust me, dude, it's chill. Dude, the girls will like it. Completely wrong, right? We're just sick fucks. And so we get up there and we have the music playing and, you know, we're slowly going by, you know, the idea is you're slowly going to cruise by, you know, throw a nice butt baby and then keep driving. And my, my fucking little brother just goes, nice butt baby. Like that in his high pitched voice, dude, you know, middle schooler. And then I just hit the brakes, stop there. Like a woman turns, she hears that. He stops, he tries to roll up the window, have fucking child locks on, dude. He just got to sit there while this girl just stares at him and goes, what the fuck did you just say? And he's like, oh, and he goes, dude, roll up the window, roll up the window. I go, no, dude, tell her what you said. Really sick lesson of me, dude. He never said that again. So sometimes you got to be twisted, dude, you know? It was good. You know, I'm sorry. Here, here's the thing on this podcast today. Sorry to that lady that you had to deal with that on that day. You shouldn't have had to deal with that. I was teaching a harsh lesson. And, but really I was getting the enjoyment of watching my brother turn red, red as a tomato, dude. Freaking matching the sunscreen, the sunburn on the back of his neck, right in his face, dude. He was so embarrassed. It was gold, dude. Um, so let's cruise into the sixties, dude. Speaking of convertible Craig, dude, you got the era of peace, love and bell bottoms, baby. The countercultural anthem of the 1960s, dude, you got your free love movement. You got freaking Woodstock. What up, dude? Casual blue jeans are full throttle, bro. Um, no matter where where you were from, any walk of life, people were wearing jeans, but especially the, quote, hippies were wearing jeans, right? You know, they, speaking of the rebellious nature, like, 
there's, I was reading articles, there's, it plays roles in like the civil rights movements. People wearing, you know, jeans were generally considered to be more progressive in a good way. Um, so, but you know, not, not, uh, but definitely frowned upon, I should say frowned upon by, um, the, you know, the powers that be depending on what area of the country you're in. But you have denim jackets coming onto the scene at this point. So your Canadian tux is in full throttle. Uh, you got to imagine, who was the legend that wore the first Canadian tux? I like to think it was just Neil Young, dude. Yeah, probably. S some dude just cruising down. Some unknown legend out there, which is a dank-ass Neil Young song. Just wearing a denim tux in the middle of summer, just hot. Speaking of the beach, I always loved and respected dudes that went down there in jeans, you know, in a full, like there was always some dudes who were like, I'm not beach guys, but I get this is, this is, is where the social scene's at. So I kind of gotta be here, but I ain't putting on trunks wearing my fucking jeans. And I just remember thinking like, dude, that's so uncomfortable under there, but damn, I respect it, bro. I respect it. And that's it. That's being an individual. Okay. And that's what jeans are all about. I mean, it is, in the 60s, jeans have evolved and taken their, I would say, most iconic form, which is, you know, you got your bell bottoms. You know, you get a lot of that in the 70s. Already mentioned those, but you got, you know, people are, in the 70s, you get people putting like flower patches on there, really going, taking it to town. But um, you really just get this full embrace. In the 70s, you get, look out, convertible Craig. It's where you get a little, maybe you heard of a little series called The Dukes of Hazard. Speaking of feminism, dude, you get Daisy Dukes, Catherine Box character. Um, and I'll tell you right now, even when I'm with my dank ass fiance, we're cleaning the house. Uh, you know, she puts on jean shorts and an undershirt, and I put on my, my jean shorts, which I think are the essence of dad strength, dude. You know, when you got a dude who's just wearing jean shorts around the house? When you gear up, dude, when your Saturday outfit is an old college football shirt, maybe a school you didn't even go to, and just some jean shorts, and you're going to get, you're going to take care of stuff around the house. I mean, that's just where it's at. Just cruising around. When you got the jean shorts that have that extra little strap where like your chain wallet can go, I mean, that's just a great, that's a great look. Only reason you'd, you only and you take the chain wallet to the other side from when you go out to the bowling alley later that night. I mean, that's what it's all about with the boys. The best. This is where you get this in the seventies, dude. Jean shorts or Christmas. Okay, we got jean pants. Why aren't we making these puppies into shorts? So sick. One of the best moves you can do. Take an old pair of jeans. You know, maybe the, you know, speaking of how they get worn, but sometimes the rips become too much. You just got to cut them into shorts at that point and just become a superhero. I wanted to make a cartoon about that, Aaron. Instead yeah. of like where, you know, Clark Kent changes into his cape, right? Where a dude just, when he's got to go, like, it's just an, it's just a neighborhood and all the things. He doesn't, you know, save the world or anything, but his neighbor's like sprinklers running and wasting water. And he's like, damn. And he's got to change out of his work clothes and just put on a jean shorts. Just go over there and fix it. And then just sip a nice hot coffee. You don't know how into sipping hot coffees and having a small amount of clothing on I am. It's just what I'm into, dude. It's why I live in SoCal. It's why I live in this climate, dude. Just barely there. Also, I, I'm into really high cut jeans on dudes. I think it's important. You know, I should say this now. I think it's important, Aaron, for dudes to feel sexy, dude. Totally. And when, yeah. And when I wear jeans... I feel sexy, dude. I feel sexy in my denim shirt right now. And and you know what? Honestly, dude, I have jean shorts where I get stuff done around the house, and I feel sexy when I wear those, dude. I'll tuck my t-shirt in to feel a little extra sexy when I'm just cleaning, you know, or changing the, the vents and the air conditioning, spritzing our, our, um, our indoor plants. You got to feel sexy doing those things. It's important, dude. For men and women alike to feel sexy dude. All, during all junctures of the day. Before you're going into a meeting, dude, at work, or you got to gear up for a Zoom, a lot of dudes are wearing sweatpants 
under there. You know, they got the blazer on top because they know it's only that medium shot. And they're talking to the bosses. Now, put yourself in a wide shot. Sit back from the camera. S still, if you have to wear a sport coat or whatever it is, wear it. But have denim shorts on. You know, like a little German boy with, you know, who wants too much chocolate or something like that. Like that type of outfit, but with jean shorts, you know. That's how you need to be dressing, dude. That's the sick ass look, dude. So sick. Freaking too sick, dude. Give yourself the gift of sexiness, my bros listening today. Okay? And speaking of gifts, I was I must once again mention that there's no need to stress over the holidays this year. We've got those impossible to shop for family members covered, dude. Because Dadgrass now has something for everyone, including your most loved furry friends. Take the edge off and enjoy the season with their classic pre-roll joints, hemp flour, tinctures, gummies, and CBD dog bones. Dude, you know me and Sonny are going to be posted up because you know I love those pre-roll joints, dude. I'm going to be out on the balcony, dude, enjoying those, throwing Sonny a nice little CBD bone. And we're going to just be maxing and relaxing this holiday season, not even worrying about all the other terrible gifts I got from my family members because I'm also going to be getting them some nice stuff from Dadgrass this year. Good little stocking stuffers, dude. The tinctures, dude. You know, like they mentioned, the CBD gummies, dude. I think everyone in my family might be getting gummies this year. And guess what? Everyone in my family is over 18. That's chill, dude. And even Sonny's got doggy years over 18. You know what I'm saying, dude? And the best part is Dadgrass. It's legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over. And it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S., dude. And right now, so whether you're looking for, you know, your new buzz or a, or a a chill way to enjoy an old favorite. Daggrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. And Sonny and I need it now more than ever in the holiday season. Our roofers have been working forever. It sounds like freaking Santa and his reindeers are landing on our roof every morning at 830. So we could both use those uh, legit uh, Daggrass CBD pre-rolls for myself and those dank little CBD bones for Sonny. So I'm fired up on those CBD dog bones. That makes me freaking happy. And they got the gummies, which is, is the chillest way, dude. I'm saying if you're thinking about getting into CBD or anything, I would say the Dagrass CBD gummies are a nice way to go about that. Um, fired up on that, although I'll tell you right now, I'm all about the CBD pre-rolls, especially out on the G courts with my boys, dude. So right now, Dagrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dagrass.com slash dank. Go to dagrass.com slash dank for 20% off your first order. That's dagrass.com slash dank. And remember, like I said, it's never too early to play holiday music and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts we're thinking about it right now whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants you can make this season to be jolly with manscaped do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom i can't agree more dude i cannot agree more dude you know you got to add manscapes top of the line shower products to have the people thinking all i want for christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack, and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use code DANK for free shipping and 20% off. I'm telling you, dude, you got to get that whole grooming routine down. You know, Manscaped is taking care of your freaking chestnuts, okay? And you want to keep those. You don't want to be worried when you're roasting them over the open fire, dude. I'm, you know, I shouldn't say go out and, you know, put your, your hog over an open fire, but I'm saying right now with Manscaped and having that nice entire grooming routine dude i get the platinum package has each product from the best in line performance package plus ultra premium body wash ultra premium two-in-one shampoo conditioner ultra uh premium deodorant it's the best way to smell fresh from your santa hat to your candy cane i gotta tell it tell you dude my fiance appreciates it dude give the gift to your boys dude and then that's gonna spread the gift to their significant others dude that's the best part is this manscape it keeps on giving dude the 4.0 body trimmer and the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate presence plus both are waterproof so there's no issue cleaning the snow out of your driveway i mean dude they got Manscaped's just got you taken care of this holiday season, dude. So give the gift to yourself. Give the gift to your bros, dude. And that gift's going to get passed on to the sigos, dude. You know what I'm saying, dude? So right now, it's the perfect stocking suffer. Add in the brand new Body Buffer, an incredible body scrub that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than that old loofah. Um, so cruise over to Manscaped, dude. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DANK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code DANK 
Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. All right, dude, back to denim, dude. The 70s, bro. We're pretty sick. Dad strength, feeling sexy. Now, we're in the 80s, dude. Cold War era. The Russians want blue jeans, dude. It's a symbol of Western freedom. Has been for a couple decades now. Okay? People want them. People want them globally, dude. Hollywood movies are getting pumped out everywhere. Main characters are wearing these blue jeans. You know, your Westerns with John Wayne. Cool dudes and Easy Rider. Even the, even freaking in The Shining, I think the dude's wearing, Jack Nicholson's wearing some blue jeans. At one point, he freezes to death in them. You know what I'm saying? So these they're freaking everywhere, dude. Um, but here's the thing. Can't get them in the Eastern Bloc in the 80s, dude. And, or even in the 70s, you can't get them. And in the 70s, the Eastern Bloc was manufacturing, because there was such a demand for it and a call for it from the populace, they called these like jeans like they were shoddy parody jeans. This guy, an East, East Berliner named Joachim Georg uh, Michael, this guy's got three names, dude, should be in a band. He called these, he writes Levi Strauss, he's like, dude, we want your jeans, bro. We need your jeans over here. They're so sick, dude. He calls them these East jeans. They're parody jeans. And uh, they describe them as ill-fitting and too short with a gap on the backside and a high waist that cut into his stomach. Sounds uncomfortable, dude. Um, you have eventually, finally, in like 1978, uh, popular demand wins out, dude. Even the, you know freaking Soviet brass is like, all right, dude, let's just talk to Levi Strauss. We'll get a supply of 800,000 pairs of jeans. We'll sell them within the country's borders. We're going to get a markup. We're going to get our cut. Um, but people are still buying them, dude. Uh, they're going for like 74 bucks at a time with inflation is like basically as much as like a pair of, you know, designer jean gets you today. Um, dude, some jeans are like 500, 600 bucks. That's insane, bro. Uh, you have an iconic moment in July, 1988. Um, there's public restlessness. It's all gnarly, dude. There's a performance by Bruce Springsteen at the Berlin Wall where he says, like, I've I've not come here for any government. I've come here to play rock and roll for you in the hope that one day all bears will be torn down. And he's wearing jeans when he says that, dude. Think about his album, Born in the USA. It's just his butt with a red handkerchief and a pair of jeans, dude. It's a baseball cap, I believe. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a red hat? I think so, yeah. Aaron, I love that, dude. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Just beasting it, dude. But he's got a nice butt. Got, that's the thing, dude. The buttocks butt. looks good in the jeans, you know? Looks good. Uh, 1989, November 10th, 1989, people around the world woke up to the news that East Germans were suddenly finally free to travel beyond their country's closed-off borders, dude. Berlin Wall's coming down. Checkpoint Charlie, maybe you heard of it, dude. You have people just hammering at the wall, taking it down, doing work. What are a lot of these people wearing? Everyone's basically wearing jeans. It's iconic, bro. It's iconic, dude. Um, and there's a huge markup. And also, once it comes down to business is a boom, and you got Levi Wrangler, Lee, enticing business opportunities uh, in the Soviet bloc and the East, well, the Eastern bloc, I should say, just sending in freaking Levi's 501s and, you know, pair of Wranglers, dude, and Brett Favre, dude, hasn't even been wearing them yet with the front pocket not included, so his wang could come out. Then we step into um, the, I mean, also, back in the States, you got your stone wash, your acid wash, ripped jeans, the skinnier leg cuts are coming in with the tapered ankle. They're seeing a lot of that in the 80s, a lot of acid wash in the 80s. We're cruising into the 90s now. Changes, dude, grunge, hip-hop pop cultures influencing it's always been influenced by popular culture but now in the musical realm um you get straight legged mainly ripped you know think about seattle dude flannel jeans you have the iconic snl mom jeans sketch which i think actually came out in the 2000s but it's very 90s it's hearkening to the you know the gap or guest jeans that had the you know 12 inch zippers on the moms that just went from their friggin you know, basically all the way from the back up to their, basically was a pair of overalls. Um, 
great sketch if you've never seen it give it a watch i think written by maybe tina fey i can't really remember i know she did the kotex classic sketch which was pretty hilarious um but you got bigger baggier better badass rebellious when i was in school i would sag i had no butt just extended back that's why i hit the squats heavy these days no just just a back with a crack in it was all i had and i was just sag trying to look cool that was outlawed at my school dude you could not sag i mean i did also i was a little bitch this has been well covered i did go to i went to public school for a little bit but i so bad wanted to cruise befittingly enough to sacramento because i wanted to go on a sick ass trip that the private school went on and since i was a little spoiled bitch my mom was like fine and transferred me Right then, I had to wear khakis and navy pants. Funny enough, to go to a vacation, or not a vacation, but a field trip in Sacramento, because I liked history, where I learned that jeans were invented and I wasn't allowed to wear jeans anymore or sag. Think about that. Ironic, don't you think? Also, iconic, don't you think? Cruising into the 2000s, bro. You got Destiny's Childs, bro. What a great band. You got Britney Spears. What up, dude? Honestly, dude, me and my dang fiance, one of the first days we went on, just bonded over Britney Spears. And we talked fashion, too. I remember asking her, I was like, are you wearing a cardigan right now? She laughed. I knew what a cardigan was. That's why you got to listen to this pod, dude. You got to know shit, dude. I appreciated the ultra low, ultra low rise jeans that she was wearing. Better believe that. Better believe I appreciated those, dude. Better believe those will be appreciated in the drill factory now that she's out of town. Just hearkening back, dude. Memory banking that, dude. Taking a mental note. Do you see what I do? I take a mental picture like that. <laughs> save that for the memory bank. Deposit it and make a withdrawal later in the drill factory. Boot cuts are back. You know, talking cowboys. It's a functional thing. Um, now you get your, two, you know, in your 2000s, you get your designer. Seven for all mankind. I had those. Citizens of Humanity. I used to sell those. Hudson jeans. Used to sell those. I remember the Hudson rep cruise around and hooked me up with uh, some of those. Right now, I like to rock Joe's jeans. But uh, I'm not just some guy, Aaron. I worked at Nordstrom, dude. I used to sell jeans, dude. I worked at the, in men's sportswear. I would sell dad's Tommy Bahamas. And then I then I switched, switched over to the rail, which was the hip area for younger dudes. And I would sell jeans, dude. I'd sling denim, bro. And that shit was expensive. But guess what? Here's the thing. They say dudes are tough to shop for. They are. And, you know, they always go, oh, ladies like to shop and go around and try stuff on. Men are difficult. They're annoying customers, dude. Men are annoying customers when it comes to clothing because all they know is what they don't like. They're like, I like this one thing. I won't change it. And don't get me wrong. I, I suffer from that a little bit. But when I'm selling you something and I'm trying to get you in the dressing room, try it on, bro. Trust me, dude. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. You know what I'm saying? Straight up men's denim house over here bro trust bro i'd say go in there let me go in the dressing room with you dude that's how hard you can trust me right now dude i want you to trust me hard i'd say stuff like that and then the manager would be like all right you can't say stuff like that to the customers i'd be like all right my bad my bad i'm just really freaking fired up to sell these jeans dude they're sick they're diesel they're on markdown right now they're going to go to the rack tomorrow i really want to get these things off our shelves my manager's just like respect dude go make that paper i'm like hell yeah bro let's get this let's earn and burn you know what i'm saying and then I would talk to a dad and I'd be like, look, dude, we got to get you out. Look, there's the Levi's 501, good price. I'd say stuff like price point, even though I don't need to say that. Why am I adding the word point to it? It just sounds smart. It's just price. Go to good price. But let me tell you what, dude, step over there. Rub your freaking knuckles along the hands of these citizen jeans, dude. Rub your knuckles along those. Feel these Hudsons, dude. Feel these. Look at this. Look at the little fade in here. Look, I know it's a little inauthentic. I know that you don't work with your hands, dude. You're a finance bro. I get that, dude. Okay? I understand. But here's the thing. We're well beyond that. We're well beyond that. You can buy a pair of jeans that come with those little um, stones that you can put in the laundry to fade them even more. You can do that. Don't worry about that. Look good. Style is confidence, bro. This can be your style now. Let's try it on. Let's see if it's you. And then they try it on, and sometimes these guys would light up. And I'd be like, hell yeah. Then sometimes they would try it on, and they'd be like, nope. And I'd be like, you know what? You're right. Let's just get you a new pair of 501s, bro, and cruise you out of here. And that's fine. Don't knock it till you try it. 
customers come in. Guy comes in with his wife. My wife dragged me in here. Oh, I'm like, dude, I feel bad for this lady, dude. I'm like, dude, any guy who comes in here and has the joke, oh, my wife got me to come into the store, go shopping today. I'm like, dude, you don't, you need to go down on your wife, dude. She's a nice lady. I feel like you don't feel like you're being selfish, dude. I love, especially during the holiday season, to cruise around with a nice hot beverage. So maybe even some pumpkin spice. I'll, I'll fuck around with some pumpkin spice. I don't give a fuck. I'll do it. I'll get cute as hell, dude. I'll get cozy. I'll put on a sweater, dude. Itchy. I'll wear no undershirt. Let me itch in that sweater, dude. <laughs> I want to itch in it. Just walk around. Be cute. Bring the dog. Look at light shows. I like to go around and watch lights <laughs> change in sequences and shit. I want to do that. It's a nice time. Okay. 2010, 2010s, whatever the hell you call them. You get skinny jeans, bro. This is iconic, dude. You get emo dudes. You get dudes who aren't muscular wearing jeans and looking good. It's nice. Then you get dudes who are muscular wearing those nowadays, and it looks even more legit. I like that. Sexy. Remember, sexy. You need to feel sexy. I would tell dudes that at Nordstrom, I would say, dude, do you feel sexy? I'd go, excuse me for saying this, but I'm going to say it to you. And then go, what? You look sexy. And then the guys would laugh. They'd giggle. They'd laugh. And you know how they laugh? They'd go, <laughs> and they'd feel a little sexy for a second. And I go, let's keep that. Let's keep that going. And skinny jeans help you feel sexy, you know, and you got to earn the skinny jean look. And look, they're great. They look good. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. You can wear them out to dinner. A dark wash jean, it's great. You can put a dinner coat on it. Old dudes can wear them. Young dudes can wear them. You can wear them to the club. You can wear them to a restaurant for a steak. You can wear them out. You can wear them to work. You can wear them to the beach. You can just freaking cruise around them. You can do work on them. They're probably not the most comfortable to do work in, but you know, they got that stretch technology, so you still can get down there and you can get down on the dance floor, which is important too. So I think that's legit. So. I mean, that's fired up. Fires me up, dude. It's, we're cruising through the decades via denim right now, right? Um, also, what's great about them, they did a study. I was reading this because I was like, you know, you don't wash your jeans every time unless you're a maniac, right? Kind of the best part about jeans is you wear them in and, you, and they feel good and it's your go-to. They actually studied it. The denim, the molecules and the bacteria had about the same amount on them, whether washed or not. I don't know if that means it just really soaked in and it's disgusting because there are <laughs> lies, damn lies, and statistics, Isaac Newton, what up? But according to these stats, it's like if you don't wash them, they're the same clean or dirty, depending how you look at it, as they are if you do wash them. So, sweet. Oh, wow. Now, question for you. Yeah. Button flyer zipper? I like the zipper. Thank you. I like the zipper. Although I do remember, remember the Lucky Brand jeans and it would say, you're lucky you when you undid them. Right there, I always thought that was sick. I stole a pair of those jeans from my buddy Gavin, dude. Sorry if you're listening, Gavin. I've never said that before. But um, I still have those pair of Lucky Brand jeans that I jacked from you, bro. They're sick. There was actually my first pair of black denim. Actually, they were a pair of black jeans. And I saw them in your closet, dude, and I yanked them from you, bro, at a sleepover. I'm sorry, but you gave Joey the bed. And I thought in my head, that's the price you pay. I'm going to jack your Lucky Brand jeans now, dude. <laughs> And honestly, it was a lie because if I undid did my zipper and happened to be getting lucky with a lady, that she would not be lucky because it'd be a very tiny dink. Unless she was really into tiny dinks, then yeah, she hit the friggin' jackpot with me. Uh, you have, in the 20s, or today you have Instagram, you have these big jeans coming back. You see this on TikTok. The, you know, it's, everything comes back in style, right? Um, high waist, you got the boot cut. It's on trend right now. I like saying that phrase, on trend. It makes me sound smart. It's a good phrase to drop while you're in a Zoom meeting with someone. Yeah, that's really on trend. And then you slide back. Maybe that's the movie. Then you slide back, reach for your, your coffee in the background or whatever you have so everyone can see, so your superiors at work can see you wearing your dad jean shorts. Then come back in there and then go. And to follow up, um, let's not forget the modern movement towards shopping locally and sustainably. Um, opting for smaller independent denim brands. I think we should get a few of them on our platform. 
if you work in the fashion industry, I'm imagining in that case. And that is true. Right now, you've got a lot of eco-friendly jeans made well. Uh, right now, I, I, I take old denim back into the store. I get a discount on my new denim, so that's kind of nice. Um, so it fires me up, dude. I think it's freaking sick to wear jeans, and it's iconic. You're Every time you slip into a pair of jeans, you're slipping into history, baby. And maybe that night you can go make some history, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully you do on the dance floor. So that freaking fires me up, dude. I would say don't freeball it in them, though. I freeballed it for a while in some jeans, and I got a hemorrhoid. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wear some underwear, dude. You'd think it was cool. You know, now I wear my underwear and just sip coffee, stare at my neighbors. That's what I like to do. But I love iconic fashion. I, I don't think I've done a fashion episode. I, fe I felt like blue jeans. It was the first thing that popped into my head, and I was like, well, that's, let's just go with my gut. That feels natural. Let's do that. It's natural. Let's get after it, you know? I thought about doing the raccoon hat Daniel Boone wore. That could be sick. Davy Crockett. F yeah, what the hell am I talking about? Davy Crockett. Uh, Daniel Boone. What did Daniel Boone have, dude? Did he carry a Bowie knife? No, that was... A that Samuel was Bowie. Sam Bowie, yeah. Daniel Boone's just a schmoll. He's just another wilderness guy. You gotta like these wilderness guys. I mean, probably not a good one-on-one -on -one hang. If there's a dude who's really into the wilderness, trying to hang out with that guy one-on-one, -on -one, you're like, cool. <laughs> you are more suited for just being alone in the mountains. Mountain men, dude. Mountain men also came about during the gold rush in the 49ers before the transcontinental railroad was connected. Uh, you know, people had to take the boat around the Cape and get all the way up there. Um, but or cr cruise over the Sierra Nevadas and you'd have these mountain men that would guide you. Weird dudes. Think of think about dudes like uh, what's his name's character from um, The Revenant, Tom Hardy's character. That type of guy. <laughs> Guys that talk like that, dude. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm fired up. Fired up on it, dude. Thought about doing beanies. There's this dude named Carson that wore a neon beanie to do his hair in the morning in high school. He was an upperclassman when I was a freshman. And I was like, that's the sickest ass dude I've ever seen. He played water polo. He was so jacked because he would come from water polo practice in the pool and he'd be like trying to get warm and his hair and the beanie would be like wet. I'm like, this is just kind of a disgusting beanie. It's got to be terrible down there. But dude, the guy was the man. He was the man, dude. And he was friends with my older brother. And it's actually where I learned that lesson, the nice butt baby lesson. I, I saw him and just naturally, I just looked at Carson and I was like, dude, nice butt baby to him. And he was like, what, dude? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. You're chill. He's like, don't worry, it's chill. I do have a nice butt. Everyone tells me. I freaking play water polo, dude. And get all sorts of J's, dude. That guy was getting so many J's, dude. HJ's. BJ's, RJ's probably, ZJ's, I don't even know what a ZJ is, but it sounds legit. Dude was just getting J's, dude. Probably J'ing off as well. I was just J'ing off. But so sick, dude. The beanie. When you get your beanie, if someone steals your beanie, dude, in Orange County, massive disrespect. I don't fight. I'm not a fighter. I'm a chiller. But if someone jacks my beanie... Or one of my bros beanies. It's on, dude. It's on. And you know, you have, like I mentioned, fashion as a is a sort of this unofficial uniform of self expression, which is sort of oxymoronic, right? You have a uniform for individualism, and that is the blue jean. So sick. So I'm fired up on this app, dude. Get someone a pair of jeans for the holidays, but also, you know, don't sleep on Dograss, don't sleep on Manscaped. Um, for they got some legit stuff coming your way. Uh, fired up for another app of history is dank, dude. Questions, comments, suggestions, always email me. Oh, we didn't even do any questions this episode. Let me see if I got one in the hopper, dude. Um, let's see here, bro. This guy just asked me, bro, will you be at the show in NYC? <laughs> Chat and JT. Yes, I will, dude. Yes, I will. Have been, actually. Have been when this ep is out. So, um, hell yeah. Good seeing you, dude. Isn't that crazy how I can time travel while doing podcasting? It's friggin' sick as hell, dude. Um, let's see, dude. Let's see if I got anything else right here before we friggin' bone out. You know what I'm saying, dude? I mean, we're basically cruising down right now, dude. If you like to listen to this, I would recommend listening to this pod while you're working out, dude. Okay, this is pretty sick, dude. 
Looking for a SoCal getaway with my dank GF this holiday season. I work remotely and getting a week's vacation. Uh, I'm hoping, uh, looking for a nice little pad to post up for two weeks in SoCal. I love it, dude. Plan is to marinate with a dank GF for the first week of vacay in a nice Airbnb type setup in chill SoCal town by the beach. You know, I think San Clemente would be sick, bro. Laguna Beach would be sick, bro. And then work remotely for the second week as my dank GF head back, heads back east from New England, 24 years old, recently graduated. Um, yeah, dude, I think you got to go San Clemente. I think you got to go. I would go San Clemente even over Laguna Beach, dude. He says he's got a couple of bros in the LA area. But here's what I'm saying, dude. LA. It can suck, dude. It's a beast. Everything's an event to get somewhere. So you might as well be posted up. San Clemente, OC, dude. They got dank taco spots. Los Galandrinas, dude. Good vibes. Cruise to the pier, dude. You can go golf down there if you want to, dude. So freaking tight, dude. Um, you can probably get some good deals. You know, holiday season might be a little, you know, expensive, more expensive during uh, Airbnbs, but the weather is perfect, dude. You can go wear jeans on the beach. Honestly, wearing jeans at the pier at the beach is very acceptable, dude. You can do that. Watch bros fish, eat, eat crush fish tacos caught right there, dude. So that's my move. And then when you want to see your bros up in LA, you just shoot up the freeway, dude. Or better yet, have them come down to see you. They should be looking for an excuse to get out of the LA beast. So fired up on that, my dog, dude. Thanks for the question, dude. Freaking stay stoked, dude. Get yourself a freaking jean. Dude, a great look, elite look if you want to feel sexy. Uh, a pair of blue jeans and no shirt and a beanie. Wear that. Just wear that. You're going to feel good. Um, no one's going to ask you any questions. You'll get service anywhere. Uh, so fire it up, dude. Questions, comments, suggestions, suggestions, for Charter Wilson Treasure, gmail.com. Check out the Patreon, dude, and freaking let 